good evening, everyone, and welcome tonight to the launch of the public policy section of the 2015 Underneath the Golden Boy edition of the Manitoba Law Journal. Um, we're thrilled to have so many people out tonight. This is great. And we thank you for coming to have this opportunity to talk about Manitoba public policy um, in the sunshine. So we have kind of the best of both worlds here tonight. Um, my name is Andrea Rounds, and I'm the academic director for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. And the journal that we're, we're launching tonight and that we'll be discussing um, is a partnership between the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research and the Faculty of Law at the University of Manitoba. This is the second edition of the public policy section. Um, it was developed by Dr. Karen Levasseur, who you'll hear from in a minute or two. Uh, the policy section really reflected the need to provide an opportunity for rigorous research and discussion on issues that matter for Manitobans. More information on, Manit or the, on the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research, as well as um, on the contributors that are going to be talking tonight about the journal, is available on your seats. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please save them for the question and answer section, but there are many people here as well from the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research that are always happy to talk about public policy in Manitoba. Also on your seat is an evaluation for tonight's event. So I'll just flag that for you. Um, this is how one of the ways that we get a lot of the uh, ideas for events that we know that people are interested in, in doing. So if you could take a couple of minutes to fill that out, it would be great. So we have a great program for you tonight. I'm not going to take up any more of your time, but I will pass the program over now to Dr. Karen Lavasser. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, uh, Andrea, and thank you for that introduction. Uh, as the inaugural editor of the uh, public policy section for the Manitoba Law Journal underneath the Golden Boy, I can't tell you uh, just how proud I am to, to be here tonight to, to formally launch uh, this edition of our work. Um, and while Andrea gave me uh, much of the credit for, for uh, this book, the reality is, is that there was a really strong team uh, behind pulling this uh, this edition together, and that certainly included Dr. Andrea Rounds for all of her support, Rob Ermel of MIPR, uh, Jillian Hansen, uh, just a source of amazing strength and uh, helping to keep all of us organized. And we had a lot of uh, research assistants uh, who are students uh, employed at the University of Manitoba who helped out on this, including Raina Loxley, Alana Kernahan, Michael Hansen, and Kelly McWilliam, and many thanks go out to them. As uh, Andrea stated, uh, this, uh, th this is our second edition, and uh, we recognized a few years ago that there are some really talented uh, scholars and practitioners here in Manitoba and across Canada who are writing on really important issues related for, for Manitoba, and we knew that we needed to design a, a, a book or a journal or something to, to, to produce that legacy of moving forward of rigorous research. And um, we approached the Faculty of Law and asked them if there was a, a partnership to be available and uh, we, uh, we negotiated that and that's why we're here today and so we certainly owe a great deal of thanks to the Faculty of Law for uh, um, helping us to uh, form this partnership and insert a public policy section to their law journal. Uh, this second edition has seven uh, truly outstanding uh, articles uh, that all relate to issues in Manitoba from balanced budget legislation, uh, poverty reduction and uh, the proposal for a basic income for all Manitobans. Uh, there's a chapter on labour market policy for Aboriginal people. Uh, we have a chapter on youth crime that will be presented by Dr. Kathleen Buttle here tonight, one of our presenters. We have another chapter on family violence. Another on the uh, degree of representation in criminal juries in Manitoba. And last but not least, a chapter on infrastructure policy by our presenter, Dr. Joan Grace from the University of Winnipeg. And uh, there's also a chapter that I contributed that really outlines the uh, economic and political landscape for, uh, for public policy in Manitoba. And um, one of the downsides of publishing is that it just really takes a long time. And so I was reading my article this morning thinking about what I wanted to say tonight and I realized how incredibly out of date my chapter already is because, uh, because it, it ended just around the start of the rebellion, which is probably the most fascinating event that's one of the most fascinating events that's happened in Manitoba politics in a long time. So uh, just briefly, I guess I just wanted to make a couple of quick points to 
maybe situate some of our discussion in a larger context. Um, you know, with the leadership challenge, uh, with the um, uh, the win by uh, marginal win by Greg Salinger, uh, we've seen a couple of things happening that I, I think are of some concern to uh, public policy moving forward. Uh, the first one is that I think I think that there are some signs that decisions are being made to promote political capital or build political capital, and not necessarily decisions being made to support public policy. Uh, you know, one of the most recent events was the cabinet shuffle just on April 29th of uh, this year. Um, uh, that, that might help to illustrate that there maybe is, there are some decisions being made to build political capital. Uh, the introduction of uh, Minister Saran uh, into uh, what is now his portfolio um, as the Department of uh, Housing and Community Development has certainly been suggested by some as being a, uh, a partisan move by Greg Selinger to uh, reward him for providing some votes uh, during the leadership review. And it certainly raises an important question as to, uh, you know, you know, is it acceptable to provide a cabinet posting uh, for, uh, for that kind of political uh, assistance? Now, the second thing, uh, the second uh, issue for public policy, maybe a little bit more directly, is that um, with the leadership challenge, we've also seen uh, not one, not two, but three cabinet shuffles in the last 18 months, and, and those are, are concerning. Um, I've argued uh, elsewhere that, um, you know, with these numerous cabinet shuffles that uh, Manitoba is experiencing a revolving door of cabinet ministers. And uh, just by way of example, the Department of Housing and Com Community Development in the last year and a half has now gone through uh, three different ministers, uh, Kerry Irvin Ross, Peter Bjornsson, and now Minister Sharan. And the concern here is that we know that short tenures in leadership tend to inhibit the development and the implementation of uh, significant or transformative public policy. And so for, for those of us here tonight who are concerned about the state of public policy, I think that this is uh, something we should be uh, concerned about. Uh, and certainly, um, uh, you know, another, another concern would certainly be the, the this, this year's budget. Um, what was fascinating about this year's budget was that it was literally developed in the time of a uh, leadership crisis. Uh, and, you know, it certainly raises questions as to the quality of internal discussion that occurred and the degree of representation uh, that fed into the budget discussions, uh, given that there was uh, a lot of bitterness and some, some tension and, uh, and distrust that, that obviously uh, took place. And so, um, in closing tonight, uh, before I turn the mic over to my, my colleague, Dr. Joan Grace uh, and Dr. Kathleen Buttle, uh, I guess I just want to say that uh, this appears to be a, a, a government that, that is stuck, and that's not my word, actually. This is a word that uh, was used by uh, sources close to the, uh, to the NDP government. And it's not surprising, uh, given that there is a lack of internal trust, uh, there are attempts to rebuild, that doesn't seem to be going as, as well as maybe the, as the NDP would like. And um, there's also real significant financial uh, pressures uh, that are that are occurring, uh, leaving uh, this government with fewer and fewer options uh, to establish uh, new programs or developing public policy initiatives. So uh, it certainly means what this all means is that um, moving ahead with public policy will certainly uh, be be challenging um, uh, to be sure. Uh, so on, on those notes, what I would like to do is to, uh, uh, to turn the uh, discussion over to Dr. Joan Grace from the University of Winnipeg, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about her chapter on infrastructure policy, and then we're going to hear by Dr. Kathleen Buttle talking about neoliberal justice and uh, youth crime in our province. We are going to allow for some time for question and answer, and uh, most importantly, there are going to be cookies and coffee and tea. And uh, just a quick note that we actually will be selling uh, the journal for $20, and so if anyone does want to pick one up, you're feel, feel free to pick one up and you can pay for it on your way out. So um, again, thank you so much to the to the MIPR team um, this uh, and, and to our contributors, and also a big thank you go to our peer reviewers uh, who are really an important source of uh, ensuring that we have uh, rigorous and uh, good quality uh, research. Uh, moving forward. And without our contributors and our peer reviewers and our team, 
we literally would not be here tonight. So thank you to all of you. And uh, Dr. Joan Grace, I'll turn the podium to you. Thank you.